Hi, my name is Sylvie San Juan, and I'm a teacher at Belen Desert Preparatory School in Miami, Florida, where I teach APR history, among some other things. And I want to welcome you to today's AP practice session. If you want to follow along with me today, please click on the link over the video now so you can download a PDF of the question that we're going to be working on today, and you can follow along. All right, let's get started. Today, we're going to be working on FRQ1, the comparison long essay. The suggested time for this one is 35 minutes, although you're going to be given the essay packet and you'll work your way through it. Uh, make sure you pace yourself, listen to your proctor's timing prompts, and um, really give yourself the appropriate time for each question. Today's art historical thinking skill is going to be comparison. So one image will be provided for you and then the second image you will choose and um, the image will not be provided. So you're going to take that one from your mental database of images. And as always, make sure that your chosen work is appropriate um, to the time period specified. And we'll look at that coming up. All right. When you see this prompt, it looks huge, but we're really going to break it down today. So you'll be able to tackle this no matter what. All right. The first thing we have to do um, once we read through and we learn about what artwork is provided to us is to select and completely identify another work that references or depicts a specific religious narrative in a way designed to elicit an emotional response. So obviously the work that's been uh, sh that's being shown to us, Ecstasy of St. Teresa does this very well because that's why it was chosen for us. And then the works that you see below on the list, those are also very appropriate choices. That's why I always tell my students, stick to the list if you can. Um, if you decide to go off list, make sure that you read the prompt really carefully because oftentimes there's going to be a particular period that is specified for you. In this case, it says early Europe and the colonial Americas. So you need to make sure that your sample, your example artwork is from this time period. Next, we need to describe the content of the religious narrative that is referenced in both of the works, the one that is given to us and the one that we choose. Then next, using specific visual evidence from both works, we need to explain at least one similarity and or one difference in how the two works represent the religious narrative. So here we are using supporting evidence from each work to earn our task points, okay? Now this next one that's in purple. This is a task point that I want you to be really, really aware of and look for this one so that you can definitely earn it. Now, this is a claim or a thesis statement and I know it's a little bit of a strange place to find it in the middle of the essay, but we need to make that claim here for task six and then support it with contextual evidence as we're required to do here or visual evidence. This one gives us a choice from both the ecstasy of St. Teresa and our selected work in the explanation. So we can pick um, whether it's visual or contextual, but we need to provide supporting evidence from each work to earn tasks seven and eight. And here are our choices. Try and pick one of those if you can. All right, so again, here are images of our three options. We, they will not be provided to us, but we can think about these images. Um, and if not, we want to pick something else from early Europe and the colonial Americas, but definitely Rock and Pieta, Isenheim Altarpiece, and the Lamentation, all great choices for this one. Okay, here we see them a little bit larger, where maybe it helps you uh, inspire you which one you would pick if presented with this prompt. And we need to make sure it has a specific religious narrative and it elicits an emotional response. Okay. So for task one, remember that you need to provide identifying information. And this is two identifiers beyond the prompt. So any of the uh, pieces of information that are listed below these artworks could earn you that point. Now, to know what would earn you a point or not earn you a point, uh, what I would advise is to look at the course and exam description. Each artwork has a little caption. If it's mentioned in that caption, um, it's a really, really good chance that you would earn points for that identifier. If you don't see it in that caption, like it's some other sort of detail, um, you know, you may or may not earn points for that. So I would suggest a really use that course and exam description as a reference as to what would count as an identifier. Okay, 
And remember, you need two identifiers beyond the title because that was provided to us. So for tasks uh, two and three, remember we're providing, uh, describing the content. Let's start off with task two. Now look at these two choices below. Okay, we're gonna find the best answer. One of them for describing content, the sculpture depicts a lady between several columns. Or St. Teresa is shown in a reclined position swooning as an angel is about to pierce her heart with an arrow. Now put yourself in the reader's shoes. Uh, which of these is the best option? Which one would your teacher say is the best option? Let's see, that one, right? It's a lot more specific than the other one. So be specific. This is what will really ensure that you earn those task points and it's communicating to the reader that you're familiar with this work. You can describe the religious narrative and really try and guarantee yourself earning that task point. All right, be specific. So let's take a look at task three. Describe the content of the religious narrative that is referenced or depicted in your selected work. So let's think about some things that we could say if we chose the rock and pieta. So we could say uh, Mary holds the body of her dead son, Jesus, after the events of the crucifixion. Her face shows emotion and pain. So see here, we're being very specific. So this is a good choice. All right. So let's pretend that we've chosen the Isenheim altarpiece. So what are some things that we could say for task three and that description of the religious narrative? For the Isenheim altarpiece, for example, we could say the crucifixion is depicted in a night scene. Christ is shown with his hands twisted in an unnatural position. His expression, position, and emotions of the mourners around him emphasize his suffering. This is also a very valid description of content. All right, and there we see that main scene that's being described. Okay, now task three of the lamentation from the Scribenni Chapel or the Arena Chapel. Let's try this again now. Try finding the best answer here. Let's see. Definitely the second one. Look how much more specific that is. The first one just says a group of people in front of a mountain. Mm, that doesn't tell us that we know about the religious narrative. But instead, if we say a group of mourners included Mary, John the Evangelist, Mary Magdalene, they express emotions, or emotions around the body of Christ. The scene takes place after Jesus has been lowered from the cross following the crucifixion. This is way more specific and it lets us know that we know about the religious narrative that's being shown. All right, so be specific. Now, let's move on to tasks four and five. So using specific visual evidence from both works, explain at least one similarity and or difference in how the two works represent the religious narrative. So first, remember, you look there for the and or, and then we use the evidence from each work as uh, that will earn our task points. So we need to state the similarity and or difference. We can either do that separately or within our details, and I'll show you how to do that within the details. So we need to provide visual evidence about the given work and then provide visual evidence about our chosen work in order to earn these task points. Let's take a look at an example. So um, a sample similarity with supporting evidence. In this case, uh, the writer has started off by stating the similarity, um, although it's not required to do so here, um, but um, you could state it. Both sculptures include reclining figures with expressions of pain. Now, this is where we get the points. An ecstasy of St. Teresa, the saint has her head thrown back. The upright angel is looking directly at St. Teresa as she displays emotion. Similarly, in the Rock and Pieta, Christ has his head leaning back with a look of agony as he sits on Mary's lap. Mary looks directly at him like the angel gazes at St. Teresa. So we're really emphasizing that similarity, uh, what they have in common, but we've used visual evidence about each work. And that's where we're earning the point. Visual evidence about the ecstasy of St. Teresa, visual evidence about the rock and pieta. Okay. In this case was a similarity. Now, let's take a look at a sample difference with some supporting evidence using the Isenheim altarpiece. In the Isenheim altarpiece, Christ's skin has numerous cuts and his body appears to be an unnatural greenish gray hue. His body demonstrates evidence of physical torment he endured. 
through the bleeding wounds and the crown of thorns. St. Teresa is experiencing psychological pain, so her body is intact. Rays of light are visible in the background in the sculpture rather than the instruments of suffering, like the cross and the crown of thorns, which can be seen in the Isenheim altarpiece. So we don't need a separate sentence for tasks four or five. Uh, providing the visual evidence of each has established that difference. Okay, one is focusing on the physical torment and the other one on the psychological pain. So we've really hit both of them here and established a difference. Okay, and here's a difference uh, for the lamentation. Um, the ecstasy of St. Teresa depicts an intimate scene of the angel and the saint with an otherworldly setting bordered by columns. Spectators, including members of the Coronaro family, the patrons of the work, observe the religious scene from seats on either side of the sculpture. So see, we're specific, it's visual, it could definitely earn us the point. In the lamentation, a large group of figures surround Christ in an outdoor setting. A rocky hill and a tree suggest elements of nature behind the main group of mourners. Again, we're specific and really describing. We could even go further and describe the mourners again, John the Evangelist. Um, it depends on what you've already described in the previous, uh, for the previous point. You want to make sure you're not uh, double dipping the points, um, but um, you could mention the individual mourners if you didn't mention that uh, previously. All right, then we get to tasks six, seven, and eight. So remember, we need to explain at least one difference in how both works elicit an emotional response from the viewer. This is that claim that I mentioned for task six. And here are some task six examples that we're gonna take a look at. Make sure to be specific. Okay, you must write a specific claim. So here are examples for each one. Uh, for the Rock and Pieta, you could say uh, the Rock and Pieta depicts suffering and the ecstasy of St. Teresa portrays religious ecstasy to elicit an emotional response. We've made a claim. We can earn the task. For seven and eight, we would have to use um, significant evidence to back up this claim. Okay, and here you can see the other examples as well. Okay, so let's focus on the lamentation to look at how we could provide evidence for tasks seven and eight. All right, so there we have our task six for this artwork. And for explanation, again, we want to be really specific. We could say St. Teresa was a Carmelite nun who lived during the Catholic Counter-Reformation. During that time, works of art encouraged active participation from the viewers, which is why Bernini chose a theatrical setting to portray an intense religious experience. Then for our other task, we want to talk about the other work. Late medieval audiences showed a new interest in works expressing emotion to stimulate devotion. Worshippers were encouraged to develop an emotional connection to holy figures and works like Lamentation by identifying with the grief displayed by the figures. All right, now you can practice providing specific visual or contextual evidence about how the works just, um, elicit an emotional response uh, for the other possible artworks. Keep practicing and you can find additional information on FRQ1 on 2022 A AP exam on demand review video two. Okay, you've got this. I say go for all eight points, leave no point unturned, select an appropriate artwork, uh, provide two identifiers beyond the title. Make sure you read all parts of the prompt carefully and determine if you need to provide visual or contextual evidence or if you have a choice. And for task six, make sure to provide a claim that references both artworks. And finally, provide specific supporting evidence for that claim to bring it home and earn tasks seven and eight. All right, and you've got this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.